This is a quick update to the Taylor Transmit uh, Mixer video I did uh, a little while back, link below. Uh, if you'll recall, there were some interesting mixer artifacts. And so what I thought I'd do is spin a new board that has the ESP32, ES8388, and the SI5351 50, uh, 50 all on the board and connected to each other by as short a traces as possible. Um, I mean, the, the I2S lines, for example, uh, have uh, anywhere from between 1 to 12 megahertz signals on them, so it's far from ideal to have them uh, as uh, breadboard fly leads. So here's the board here, and as you can see, I've started to build it up. Um, just some highlights of the board. So the SI5351 uh, and uh, so the ESP32 goes here. The ES8388 will go here, and then over to this side we'll have the SI5351. Uh, um, so that's on the reverse of the board. Uh, the S all the SMD components are on the are on this side of the board. Um, so just going through the circuit at a high level, and I'll include a link to the schematic below. Uh, but here's the uh, five volt supply here. So we have 12 volts coming in here. Here's a five volt supply here. I've got a 3.3 volt supply that I'll be using for the analog supply for the ES8388. Um, there is another 3.3 volt supply, but I'll be just taking it from the uh, 3.3 3 volt uh, uh, that comes out of the uh, ESP32. Uh, um, so here's those short I2S leads that I mentioned. So this is the this is where the ES8388 board goes on the reverse side, and then here's those I2S lines here, the uh, the M clock, S clock, uh, uh, LR clock, and so on and so forth, as well as the uh, digital in and digital out. Uh, down here we have the usual arrangement of the dual dual uh, op amps and the FST 3253 which goes here. So here's the dual dual op amps go here. Then we have that the usual Talo, um, uh, Talo mixer capacitor network here. And then finally the F FST 3253 goes here. Here's where the RF combiner is going to go uh, and that'll mix the uh, the the pin 7 and pin 9 results out of the FST3253. And uh, what I thought I'd add on the on the output side is, and I, I picked, I saw this in the um, RXTX ensemble radio, is there's actually an LC series network on the output here that's resonant around about, well in this case it'll be resonant around about 14 megahertz. Um, just acting as a block to, uh, to any uh, a mix of products that are outside of 14 megahertz. And then finally I've got a little pot here which uh, allows me to control the uh, the amplitude of the uh, mixed signal and then finally we go out here through a uh, uh, through a BNC connector. Uh, so the, as you can see the supply is built up and I've tested it so both these two are working. What I'll do is I'll build up the remainder of the uh, audio processing network uh, I'll get the uh, uh, ESP32 and the ES8388 uh, installed, and then we'll come back and test and make sure it's doing that audio phase shifting correctly. So that's coming right up. One final thing before we uh, go on here, there's a little bit of a, uh, a glitch in the board here. Uh, this, uh, this trace here lifted off here, so I'll just have to bridge this with a yeah, with a resistor clipping or something. So that was the only one that I noticed on the board that uh, that I failed. So uh, another one of those uh, uh, Borge connections are going to have to go in right here. Okay, so just a quick uh, progress update. Uh, I've in, I've installed the uh, the uh, RC output filter, and there's a decoupling cap right there. Uh, I'm probing at the left and right outputs, and on the other side of the board, which uh, you can't see, I have the ESP32 and the ES8388. So uh, what I'll do is I'll inject a uh, 700 hertz tone into there, as you can see from the uh, signal generator. And then let's just pan up to the uh, oscilloscope, and then you can see there's the uh, that is the left and the right output, and you can see that that's that uh, 90 degree phase shift. Um, so uh, everything appears to be working, uh, at least as far, as far as the audio phase shift goes. I'll move on to now uh, installing the uh, op amps and the FST3253 and uh, 
we'll uh, take it from there. Okay, so I've installed the uh, op amps and the uh, capacitor network here, and so you can see those. Uh, here's those two op amps right here. And the purpose of these two op amps is uh, the zero and 90 degree audio signal comes in to these, uh, to these op amps, and then the uh, 180 and 270 degree versions of that signal get, uh, uh, get extracted by the op amps here. Um, and that's just uh, the way this uh, Taylor mixer is set up. It does require uh, each, uh, qu uh, each quarter of the phase uh, as input. So from the top here we have the zero degree signals here, 90 degree signals here, this is the 270 signal and then at the bottom we have 180. So uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, uh, get that, uh, show that on the oscilloscope and uh, we should see those uh, four signals uh, uh, all in quadrature with one another. Okay, so this is one of the few chances I get to use all four channels of the uh, oscilloscope, so I don't want to waste it. So you can see here I've got uh, all four channels uh, connected to the 090, 180, 270. And uh, here's the traces right here. So this is uh, 0, 90, 180, and 270. Uh, and you can see they're uh, in pretty good quadrature there. Uh, Notice there's, uh, there's definitely some DC offset going on there and there's some, there's some uh, differences in amplitude of the signals, um, which is interesting and that may be the cause of the, um, uh, of the strange artifacts I was seeing in the, in the mixer earlier. So uh, uh, I do have uh, an adjust that adjusts the balance between the zero and 90 degrees. Um, uh, on the output, but definitely going to get differences in the two op amps and the uh, resistors uh, around those op amps, although they are 0.5% uh, tolerant, tolerance resistors. So anyway, um, this is uh, sort of good progress. Uh, the next uh, step will be to install the FST uh, uh, 3253, uh, which is the heart of the Taylor mixer, and then we can sample the RF output that's generated from that. So another quick update, the uh, FST3253 uh, is installed uh, together with the decoupling cap and then this is a 2.5 volt uh, bias circuitry which is currently not used but that goes on the the center tap of this uh, RF combiner here. So uh, let's have a look at the output. Uh, I'll probe uh, these two outputs here and here and uh, let's have a look at the output. Okay, so here's the uh, output here. This is, a, I'm injecting an 1800 hertz tone. And you can see up there the, uh, the oscilloscope's registering 14.0018 megahertz, which is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, unfortunately, those artifacts are still there. So uh, uh, obviously uh, kind of the board's in better shape now with those uh, with uh, all the all the traces short and so on and so forth but that obviously wasn't uh, the source of those artifacts there they're, they're still there in the signal so what i'll do now is i'll do the two-tone test with 1800 hertz and uh, 1900 hertz and we'll see what we see okay so here we have the two-tone test 1800 hertz and 1900 hertz and you can see there uh, the output uh, is looking nice there um, uh, again, those artifacts are still there. Let me just uh, stop that and then I'll drill in so you can see all those artifacts there still in the signal. So, uh, interesting. Um, what I'll do now is I'll install the um, RF combiner and then as I mentioned, there is, a, uh, there is an LC series uh, circuit after the, uh, uh, the RF combiner. So I'll get both of those installed I'll put the BNC jack on it and then we'll be complete with the circuit. Okay, so here's the uh, finished circuit and uh, let me just quickly walk through it. So here's the RF combiner. Uh, I made a change, uh, I picked this up uh, off by looking at the uh, RXTX Ensemble. This is a T36 uh, and on the output side of this RF combiner, there is a parallel resonance circuit between the output side of the transformer and this 82 picofarad capacitor here. So this is resonant at around about, I think I believe about 13.8 megahertz. And then we have that series uh, LC here, 
uh, and that's resonant about the same. So in other words, the, uh, there's 22 turns here, there's 22 turns on the, uh, on the uh, output side of this transformer, and these are both 82 picofarad capacitors. Okay, on the output side here, I've just uh, I've got space for an, a pot here to control the, uh, the amplitude of the output signal. I've just shorted it out for the moment, uh, just for simplicity. And then there's the output BNC there. So let's have a look up at the um, oscilloscope to see the signal. Bear with me for a moment. So I'm injecting a... Oh, let's see if we can get that uh, in there. Let me just scroll down a little bit. All right, so I'm injecting a 700 hertz audio tone there. And you can see the signal certainly looks different to, uh, to what I had before. Not the, the ripples are still there, but they seem to be lower. Uh, there seem to be less of those artifacts. Um, I mean, that could be, uh, that just could be my confirmation bias. So, so, so anyway, uh, so let's do a two-tone test here. So I'll have the, uh, the usual 1900 and 700. So bear with me while I get that set up. Okay, let's uh, dial up. So that's 1900 and 700. And that certainly looks better than the, uh, the, sig the 1900, 700 uh, two-tone test signal I was getting before. Um, so uh, I, I, up to the um, uh, up to the FST3253, everything is pretty much the same. Um, so it looks like that uh, the, L the parallel and series LC circuit on the output side has definitely smoothed out some of those artifacts. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's have a look at the signal on the spectrum analyzer and see what we can see. Just before we move on, I uh, thought I'd uh, show the board. Uh, this is the finished board. Uh, so there's all the SMD components on the on the top side there. There's that FST3253 as we saw and then underneath And we can see here's the ESP32 the uh, ES8388 so the PCB artists board and then here's the uh, ever-present SI5351 uh, frequency synthesizer And there's the output uh, BNC and then uh, there's a little power jack here and uh, and here's where the uh, the income the audio uh, comes in so anyway that's the finished board uh, let's get on to some measurements now okay so here we are on the uh, spectrum analyzer here let's go to the upper sideband signal so minus uh, 18 db dbs on the uh, on the upper sideband signal now if we go down to the suppre to the carrier uh, we can see that's down at minus 52 dbs dbm so so we have uh, around about 34 dBs of uh, suppression between the upper sideband and the carrier. And then if we go down to the lower sideband signals, which is here and here, that goes all the way down to minus 62 dBm. So we've got between the upper sideband and the lower sideband around about minus uh, 44 dBs of suppression. I guess the upshot is uh, this is a little bit better than before. Um, so uh, some progress here. Um, I think the majority of the progress uh, was really, um, as I said, uh, I looked at the output after the FST3253 and it was pretty similar to what I was seeing before, uh, putting that uh, uh, parallel and series uh, LC resonance circuit after the, uh, the uh, RF combiner seemed to improve the situation. So anyway, uh, I'll probably wrap this video at the moment. Um, I'm going to keep going uh, on this and uh, uh, getting gradual improvement here. Um, definitely the, one of the things I want to hook this uh, circuit up to is the amplifier, the amplifier I built up uh, a few videos ago and, and really see how the amplifier affects all those, uh, all those uh, sort of harmonic artifacts. Anyway, that's all for now.